I am Michelle Rowan, President and CEO of Franchise Business Review, and excited today I have Wayne and Diana Reese with Kona Ice. They have been franchisees with the brand for 10 years this year. They're coming up on their 10th anniversary. So um, we're going to get right started. And if you guys would like to tell us, let's start with what were you doing before you uh, became Kona Ice franchisees? And Diana, if you want to start first and then... Okay. Um, I was actually in the hospitality industry. So I worked for Marriott and I was a housekeeping manager um, when we looked into Kona Ice. So when I graduated LSU, I moved back to Houston and I actually started in the hospitality industry where I met Diana. Um, so we actually met in the same hotel and uh, we actually started working together right pretty much from graduation on my end as well. So yeah. Awesome. We... So just so you know, I'm in ho I'm a hospitality background too. I started in Sheridan pre Marriott. Okay. So okay. I always yeah. I feel hospitality people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 It's a it's, it's a great a skill set for yeah. anything that comes next. It is just great training. So that's awesome. So let's talk about why why you guys decided. Did were you were, did you know that you wanted to open a franchise? Were you just trying to figure out a way to kind of be your own boss? What was that? What was that tipping point for you guys to start looking? So um, in 2013, um, well, uh, before then, uh, my parents used to own and operate their own, their own home health care business. And so growing up, I kind of saw the whole entrepreneur mindset and saw that lifestyle and saw what they hard work could actually do. And, um, um, and I saw the meaning behind that. So I've always wanted that. So I've always wanted to find um, some type of business or something that I could own and operate and run on our own. Um, so in 2013, Kona Ice was the number one low cost franchise, um, and I I I dived in right right well, off the we, bat. We actually found out about Kona on a date. That's, so I happened. He, my dad also owned his own business, but I was a little scared to own my own business. Mm -hmm. But I knew that we were going to be together, and so that was kind of he knew he wanted to leave hospitality, and I kind of was in a place where I felt like they weren't going to promote me. Um, they were transitioning to a new brand. And so I was ready to leave. So wherever he was going was where I was going. Um, and so we happened to be on a date and I asked for a snow cone and it happened to be a Kona truck. So while I'm making my flavors outside, he's on the backside looking up I'm on the sticker. I'm surveying the scene. So I'm taking <laughs> so. pictures. I'm like, this is a good idea. So yep, lo and behold, um, a date turned into a business. Um, so that yeah. is awesome. So you, 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 I'm picking up on a couple things here. So I think it's very common for one partner to be more excited or ready to do something than the other. So we always say a great rule of thumb is to make sure your partner or your spouse is on board with this idea, not necessarily at the beginning, but you want them to be part of the discovery day. So Wayne, how did you kind of get Diana to feel a little bit more comfortable <laughs> in that ownership idea or was uh, so it just more, more education? I, I threw her right in. Um, so um, we literally, uh, I went with one of my buddies. Um, Houston was taken over. So we lived in Houston at that time and it was already sold out pretty much. So we had to look elsewhere to uh, potentially start Kona because it's franchise territorial based. Um, so my sister lived in Dallas and she was letting us know, hey, Dallas is the up and coming Houston, it's growing. I think this would be a great place for you to start your business. Um, so I took my buddy down there, we found an apartment and I came, drove back. I was like, Diana, we got an apartment. We had Kona College lined up. Um, so we literally found an apartment. I drove back down. I took her to Kona College with me, spent four days in Kentucky. And we drove 15 hours to <laughs> Dallas, Texas to start um, as boyfriend, girlfriend, start our own business together. Awesome. So, it was, so it new just, town, new business. I oh, love yeah. it. Yeah. So it dropped, <laughs> we dropped everything. We quit, quit both of our jobs. Um, it was all in. We were all in from the get go. Yeah, that's great. The other thing too, I just want to commend. So I also own a business with my husband. The fact that you guys work together day to day, that is not an easy task. So I'm glad that you are enjoying it and being successful. And, and to your point, it was rough at the beginning, <laughs> but now we've learned um, our roles and, and stay in your lane and, uh, you know, to work together more efficiently. So yeah, it, it's a process. It's a process. Yeah. Awesome. We're still learning. So you, so it sounds like you, when you decided to join the franchise, you did not have another job. This was your sole focus when you started the, the okay. Right. We were we were going to quit and start Kona. Yeah, that was our game plan. 
-hmm. Okay. Is that a requirement of Kona or that was just what you guys decided worked for you? We decided it worked for us. Okay. But they do, um, when you do join the business, they do want you to have responsibility in it and they definitely want you to learn it and operate it. They don't want yes. you to get in, get the truck and pass it on to someone. So yes. I believe their requirement is at least three to six months. That could have changed. Um, but yeah, you have to be pretty much invested in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, how about um, when you kind of start, when you start doing that in your market, it, do you think it's important or do they require that you live in the market where you're starting it? Do you think that was a, a reason that you guys were successful because you were in Dallas? Yes. Um, but we didn't know the market. So one of your, uh, that was, I think, one of our challenges as well. We had to learn the market. So um, we had to learn Dallas. We knew Texas. I thought, you know, shaved ice in Texas, we're going to kill it. It's 100 degrees, no problem. Anywhere you go, no problem. Um, but we had to learn the Dallas market. We had to learn that it gets 110 degrees in the summer and no one wants to go outside when it's 110 degrees in the summer. Um, so we had to learn that. Um, so we knew what Texas could do, but we had to learn the Dallas market because it was different than Houston. Well, and it's different too, because you're building those relationships. So mm -hmm. I think so much of what has cause us to be so successful is the fact that we both work it. People know who we are. They recognize us. They, they've they seen us as a couple get married. Our family has grown with it. So that's been a large part of our success too, is we have all these relationships that we've built personally with our, with our clients. And so, yeah, to that point, knowing nobody going into community, they welcome you as a new person, as a new person joining and entering that that city or that community. And we got to grow with that. We got to learn with that, starting the chamber of commerce and growing and flowering from there. So that was pretty cool. So yeah. Yeah. So let's so let's talk about it. So when you started, what was your day-to-day -day like as a franchise owner? And then how has that evolved as you've been with the brand for 10 years? And how's your business changed? Okay. So when we first started, um, we had a warehouse that was 45 minutes from our actual territory um, because I wasn't I didn't know the Dallas market, so I didn't know where to put our, our, our warehouse and our storage unit and stuff like that. So we spent a lot of time driving our first year, um, 45 minutes to our shop and then 45 minutes back to our actual territory where we drove around for eight hours. Um, and like I said, we started in June and it was 105, 110 degrees outside. So we drove around a lot trying to find anybody that wanted to be outside. Um, so, you know, the first six months was nothing but driving, giving out free Konas, trying to market ourselves, trying to just get people to understand what our brand was, who we were, and what we're about and trying to provide for the community. Um, and so now, um, and I guess back then it was a good eight to 10 hours a day because we mainly drove. Now I probably put 10 to 12 hours in, but in a different way. Um, I start my day and now we have a staff of about 15 people. And so my day of insist when I start now is basically um, building their schedule for the day. So I am more um, delegating and making sure all of my tasks can get done um, and passing that on to my manager. So we have a manager. And so I tell them, hey, these are the things that need to get done. I work alongside him and we get those things done starting in the morning. And then I'm more of an errand guy during the day. So I go and fill whatever my managers need. Um, if he needs stuff from here, 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 I just, um, his support system. If I have to hop on a truck, I'm on a truck or doing an event. If I have to help Diana in the office or anything like that, I'm doing the office work. So I'm a Cordell steward. I'm bouncing around all day long now, um, but just biggest support system, trying to make sure everything is established. And so her role is completely different. So I do mainly the booking side of it. So I deal a lot with clients. Um, I send out the invoices. So very early on, it was a lot of research. So what chamber events are going on? What chambers can we be a part of that are in our local area? Um, what applications can I fill for the following year to start filling the truck? Um, and then research what kind of events. Schools are big with Kona. So it was a matter also, they didn't know Kona. So 10 years ago was also very different because now, you're trying to establish a brand that not very many people were familiar with. Um, they're also not familiar with us. So that was a difficult part too. So now we're having to introduce ourselves, prove ourselves as um, people and also as a business. So that was a challenge too, because when you're younger, I feel like, and 
I think we also not being married, it kind of also was against us as well. Um, Cause there wasn't a level of, they're like, they're kids. Like, what are right. they doing? <laughs> we had to gain people's trust and respect um, starting yeah. in the twenties. Uh, they necessarily didn't trust us per se, especially schools with give backs and money, um, stuff like that. So that was a big, one of our probably biggest challenges when we did start was that respect level with older folks, um, just making sure we're honest with our business. Yeah. So a lot of yeah. part, and then of course there was washing the trucks, cleaning the trucks, prepping the trucks for the day. Um, so that was I was a lot of our first time. Now I mainly come in, same thing. I'm scheduling for the day. I'm answering client emails. I'm now getting applications that I get to fill out that I don't necessarily have to research anymore. Um, and I get to, I fill my schedule, inter- I get to interview, I do reviews now. So it's very different role for me as opposed to, I'm not as hands-on as I was my first year. So I've had to take a step back in that way and hire somebody to do that stuff so I can focus on building the business and getting our trucks built schedule-wise. Awesome. So what do you guys think is the biggest challenge to owning the business, either when you started or now? Like, What is something that that any business owner or specific to Kona should be thinking about uh, are the hard parts of running the business or the day-to-day? I would say um, being a risk taker and staying... um, and, and staying motivated. I think a lot of what happens is when you hear no's consistently and you're very new to a business, you can get, um, it hurts and you're disappointed. Um, so if you stick to it and continue to move forward and press forward, then that success will ultimately come. And you'll get a lot of no's. A lot of events will not be the greatest events, but you continue going and showing up, people respect that. They know that, they, that you're reliable. Um, and you show yourself more than just what you say you are. You're showing it in your actions. I think um, one of the, the challenges that a new franchisee would see coming in would be w- when to grow, how to grow, um, yeah. and, and when to uh, bring someone some help in on board. Um, I know with businesses, you can grow too fast and that can hurt you because um, that almost happened to us. Or you... Um, get one truck and then you're, you're locked in, you're landlocked and you're only able to have one truck. Um, so I think that is a challenge. You got to be, uh, I think, come into it with kind of what you want out of it, um, almost per se. Like if you want three trucks, be able to try to see if you have that territory to where you can grow the three trucks and that kind of stuff. And trust people too. Cause I think what we see is a lot of franchisees are scared to hire folks. Um, yeah because they don't want to let go of that Mm -hmm. control because they've been running it and it's their baby, but you have to, in order to grow, Mm -hmm. you have to trust your people um, and trust yourself that you'll be able to train them well enough that they can can take it on. So it's kind of like trying to figure out what exactly you want out of this business before you dive in into it. Yeah. So what the opposite, what's the best part of owning your own business or owning Kona specifically? Uh, the best part, I, in my opinion, is I actually now 10 years in, I get to see my team grow. Um, and that's really cool. I get to see all the fruits of my hard work after 10 years, all the no's are now yeses. Um, all the big events that I was like, I'm gonna get in there one day I'm in now. Um, so seeing really my hard work, those 15 hour 10 hour days of driving around making 100 bucks paid off 10 years later. So I like that. That makes me smile. That makes me come up and still motivated to this day to do that. So yeah, that's great. And now the events just have a different meaning. So now Mm -hmm. I get to do the events and they're like, how are you doing? How's the baby? How's, you know, this staff member. So that's the cool part for me is being able to see how much of an impact we've really been able to have on the community around us. Um, I don't think you always recognize it when you're in those first few years, you're kind of mm-hmm. got blinders on because you're working so hard and, um, it's just cool. Now, whenever I'm on a truck, people are like, how's Wayne, how are you doing? How's the baby? How's your parents? Like, it's just, it's really cool now. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So how about you had mentioned Kona college? How about the type of training and support that Kona gives you initially when you started and also ongoing, what do you find the most helpful uh, to just keep your keep yourselves motivated and successful in your business? So um, uh, I believe we were truck number three eighty six, 
And our Kona College consisted <laughs> of a two day, two or three day experience. Um, and now it's up to almost four or five day experience, um, super detailed. So just seeing that growth from 10 years on how corporate has mastered and evolved with the whole college experience to really educate these new franchisees as they come on board and really take the franchisees, um, uh, how we uh, give them back our, our focus, our, all of our information that we give them back, um, they implement it into that college and make it better. So that's what I really like. Um, they listen to us and what we like and what we don't like, and they pass it on to continue to make it better for franchisees. That's what I really, really like. They are dedicated to the franchisees, and that's really cool. And you can see it. They have the passion in it. Everyone you talk to is Kona Eyes passion. It's awesome. So it just makes you excited just talking to them. Um, but their training has been top notch. And then we go to convention each year, and that's like a whole nother networking deal when you meet with everyone. Um, and that's like a jump start to your new season. And that's awesome. And they have um, breakout sessions there. They, they find areas of focus. Um, and so you can attend these classes during the day. And so um, recently they just now, and, and the cool thing is 10 years ago, they didn't necessarily have processes. So a hiring program um, and training program that you can have an employee just log into. And now they're doing these courses, videos to go along with those, how to fix stuff in your truck. Now there's videos. Um, so they offer support as we say, Hey, you know what? I think we need this. There's mm -hmm. 800 of us, but there's no set process for each franchisee. So they've helped us kind of get a system in place. So if I have a manager now, here's a book, here's how you can do the training. Here's how you can do, if something breaks, just look up this video. So they evolve with us and they're helping us to get to a place where if we one day want to hand over the keys to somebody, um, we're prepared to do so. And it's an easy transition. So, yeah, and it makes your business more valuable. 100%. Yeah. So I just, I just looked it up when you were talking about that. So Kona ice has been on our awards list since I started working with us back in 2013. And so that's based on franchisee satisfaction. And what we see is it's hard when you're scaling quickly to right. keep franchisees happy and they have, they've done that consistently and they've grown pretty, pretty well and fast. So uh, it's great to hear they're, they're implementing your ideas and what makes your job easier, but make your organization stronger as well. Cause that's on, on it's what it's that, all about. You want the highest price for your business when you go to sell it. <laughs> on top of that, they're constantly looking in the future. So they're trying to stay ahead um, on new products, anything that can help the franchise base they're on it like when covid they were on it uh, you know it, it, it was absolutely amazing so they're yeah. they're always like a, a year ahead it seems like well and they let the franchisee decide how far you want to take it if you want to grow and have 10 trucks then mm -hmm. that's on you if you want yeah. to be a two truck operation and you just are content in that they let you do that too mm -hmm. and now with their other sister business coffee they're now letting you grow in a different sector, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So they're allowing for growth. They're not, you're not limited on where you want to go if you don't want to be limited. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. So how about what advice do you guys have for anybody that is now in that beginning stage of researching a franchise opportunity? What advice do you have for them in their research or just in general as they look for what's next in their lives? Okay, I'll go first. Um, definitely reach out to some surrounding franchisees. Um, talk to them. Um, talk to them about their growth. Because um, when you get into this business, you get excited and you're, you're going to want to grow. Um, unless that's not what you are in your life. Um, it all depends on where you want to be. Um, we started out young. And so I wanted to grow and have a little empire per se. Um, so that's what I wanted. So it's really kind of figuring out what you want. And you can figure that out by talking to other franchisees, as well as kind of finding your area. Um, that's a big location, you know, finding your location where you want to run and operate. Um, but also being having patience when you first start, it's a lot of patience. Um, it's not going to happen right away. Um, success, I think now 10 years in, we can finally call ourselves successful. The first five years was the grind. The five to 10 years was mastering that grind. And then now 10 years, I think we're actually now starting to see 
some success coming out of it. So it takes time and patience yeah. and um, put some money in the bank. I think that's kind of hurt us initially to uh, have at least three, four, five months of some money, some play around money that you can, uh, that you don't know what you might need um, or just to cover expenses in general. Um, yeah, that's um, good advice. Yeah, so. Um, find something you love and that you'll be happy with. Um, ultimately, if this is something that you want to do, you want to put your passion into it. And if you find something that you love doing every day, it's not really work. I know that's so cliche, but it's, it's not. true though. Yeah, it is true. true. Mm -hmm. It is true. So awesome. Yeah, like, uh, I never thought about owning a shaved ice business. Um, but I, you can feel it in my passion pretty much every day when I talk to just any random person because they know that I've grown to love this company and this brand and everything just because of what it is so it's amazing so yeah and don't don't listen to what the naysayers mm -hmm. have to say right because right. their fear is what they're speaking out of fear mm -hmm. so you if you know you can do it then you stand by what you can do and it helps to have a good partner mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, always, always. That's great. Because you'll you'll get into it, and everyone's like, "Oh, you're getting into a shaved ice business." They're automatically going to doubt what you're getting into, a hundred percent. But we're the biggest food truck company in the world, and I'm I can't wait to see what another fifteen years does. So it's exciting. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. Thank you both for joining us today. I appreciate your feedback. Man, awesome. thank you. Have a great day. You too.